at the off-grid homestead here in North Carolina and we have finished three of five concrete slabs. Uh, the, two, the one I'm sitting on is one of two that's part of the residence portion of the project and what's on top of this slab is a slab protection membrane that I'll get to in a minute and why we have that. But I want to talk about how we built these slabs and why we think these things are going to be around forever. Okay. So we started off with a uh, really solid uh, soil base and wherever we found loose or, or not well compacted soil, we pulled it out and replaced it with some other good soil from somewhere from other parts of this property. Once that was really well compacted, we dug our trenches for our, the turn down portion of our slabs, put four inches of insulation at the bottom, four inches of insulation on the inside, and then that turned that four inches into the slab underneath it for about two feet and then transitioned to two inches. The reason we're beefing up the exterior, it, the, the edge of the slab, is because most of the heat loss in the concrete slab happens at that exterior and mostly in that horizontal direction because that's the coldest temperature is just outside the edge of that slab. In addition to that insulation that we that I just mentioned, we're doing six inches on the outside of the slab. To remove this form board here around the edge of the slab, we will run six inches of this same rock wool insulation on the outside and then continue that insulation all the way up to where we turn to the roof where we add eight inches of insulation on top of all of the roof structure and on top of the sheathing. That's right, all of the insulation for all buildings here at the off-grid homestead is going to be on the outside of the structure. That includes the framing, the sheathing, and anything else that has to do with the structure. It's all going to be inside a nice warm blanket or sweater, whatever you want to call it. But So anywhere from 4 inches to 8 inches of rock wool insulation, or in the case of this turndown slab, four inches of EPS, covering the entire structure, preserving it forever. The next thing we do is install a 15 mil vapor barrier on top of the insulation, covering the entire portion under the slab and around the entire turn down and up the edge to basically the top of the slab. All of the seams are overlapped and sealed really well with a tape that we that's been tested with that vapor barrier to ensure a tight seal and any penetrations through that vapor barrier like a plumbing pipe or electrical conduit is also wrapped with more vapor barrier and then sealed again with that tape. This vapor barrier prevents moisture from below getting into the slab and then into the house. Once we have the slab poured we have to protect it so we don't lose moisture really quickly. And especially in, when you're pouring in summer or late summer, it can get up to 80, 90 degrees, and this, that'll suck the moisture right out of this slab. As soon as we finish pouring this slab, we put this membrane down, which is designed and manufactured as a floor protection system, but uh, we've, we've selected the non-perforated version uh, to help us with the curing process. Whenever, anytime you, we're doing a concrete construction, we want to try to keep the moisture in the slab to allow it to cure, uh, and we want to do that for as long as possible. In our case, we're going to let this, these slabs sit here for two to three weeks uh, minimum before we start. Even when we go back on the slab to start the framing, this membrane is going to keep that moisture in the slab, so it's going to continue to slowly cure. As soon as these the finishers left the job site, we came out and rolled this stuff on it, secured it to these to the form boards. Eventually, we'll rip these form boards off and then tape this membrane to the edge of the slab with a tape that they sent us that actually adheres to the slab. We're going to spray a little bit of a uh, adhesive primer on the slab first before we put the tape to make sure we get a good solid bond that's going to last throughout construction. Once once we're done with all the framing and the finish work inside the house, we're going to come we're going to come back and cut right along the base the, the bottom plate of the framing and be able to remove all of this uh, this product here. 
And once we do that, then we can get in with our finisher for the concrete slab because we're going to have our concrete be the, the final finish. And this is absolutely necessary, some sort of slab protection in order to have, have a beautiful finish uh, in addition to just being very careful, asking all of your subs to be extremely careful while they're working. But this is for accidents and you know what? Foot traffic. Foot traffic happens. You're not going to avoid walking on these slabs. And with these red clays out here in western North Carolina, any moisture makes it muddy and that mud gets on shoes and then you walk all over the slab, you got a pattern of red footprints everywhere. So this is gonna this is gonna eliminate that. We're gonna have a beautiful finished concrete floor when we are done. And thanks to everything we're doing to make these slabs last forever, we're really confident that these, these slabs are gonna be strong and sturdy for the duration of these owners' lifetime and many generations to come.